So now in this video we're going to look at a uh, low battery voltage disconnect module right here. So we plug the battery in there. This monitors the battery voltage depending on the settings we have it. So this is why I like this one for demonstration purposes. Everything is well labeled. So we have it uh, with that selector there, number three, so that it will disconnect at 14.4 uh, volts. So when the battery voltage drops enough, the relay will turn off, the load won't get power anymore. There's a red LED that will take up, looks like about one milliamp of current, um, but like a large battery like this, um, relatively large. Um, there's a lot larger batteries than this, um, but uh, one milliamp of current won't really change the voltage for a very long time. Now we have the uh, reconnect right there. So it disconnected 11.4 volts. We'll demonstrate that later on. Now we have to raise the voltage up to, uh, I set it to 12.1. If we have the exact same setting right there, um, a lot of heavy loads will drop the battery voltage. So it could drop below 11.4 uh, volts here. And uh, then when this disconnects, the battery is not providing power anymore, its voltage can rise up. And uh, so it would rise up above 11.4 volts most likely. Uh, it reconnect, the load would drop it, it would disconnect, and then the battery voltage would go up, it reconnect, it would just keep bouncing back and forth. You don't want that. You want some hysteresis, you want a middle, grain, uh, middle ground range where it stays in whichever state it is in. So now I made a couple of jumpers with ferrule connectors, which uh, go into these uh, screw down terminals pretty well. And then the other side, we have these piggyback spade connectors. So there's another spade up there. Gives me a nice spot to uh, put the plastic cover right there. So I don't lose it for that. And this will slide right on you here. Click, that's not sparking from uh, that right there. It's actually the relay switching. And uh, the relay, the uh, green light is lit right now. Um, if we drop the voltage low enough, it would turn red, you'd hear another click. Uh, but that would take a long time uh, with this battery, we'd have to power load and everything. It would be very boring. So instead, we're going to substitute it with a power supply. So now I got the power supply set to the uh, same voltage that the battery was, basically. And we are going to connect the positive that side, negative this side. So these uh, piggyback spade connectors have the female spade uh, connector that we plugged into the male on the battery. But they also have a male spade connector up here. The power supply is off, so we're not going to hear uh, clicking yet. And I'm going to hit the power button, and we heard a click. And actually, uh, so I'll turn the power off. It's... Uh, no light LED and then I turn it on it's green right there and what I'm going to do is lower the voltage so I think it was 11.4 volts I'll try not to uh, block your view um, mostly we're looking at that green light and we can hear the click I'll demonstrate with the load later on so there we go uh, we drop down looks like 11.5 it's going to uh, switch so not exactly 11.4 but it was in that range and then I believe it was 12.1 we set it to reset and uh, okay, looks like we had to go up a bit more than that. Uh, but now it's green, this is good to go. So now let's look at that with the load. So now I got a couple other wires on the load side there. Those are fair rule connectors and they're coming over to this barrel jack. So we already saw uh, what that's doing. We don't need to focus looking at that. We're more interested in these numbers right there. So I got to 13.6 volts what a lithium iron phosphate battery, if it's a 12.8 volt battery, will be while it is uh, fully charged. Uh, just charged, it might drift down a little bit over time. But in any case, we are powering this power bank and uh, let's say the battery voltage is going down. And you notice also this power bank, when we get uh, the lower voltage there, it's letting less current in and it's hardly uh, kind of trickling uh, at uh, that point right there. And so this power bank alone, there you can see 12.3, is probably gonna protect the battery. So we won't need this low voltage uh, cut off. Uh, without it but uh, in any case there you can see that uh, I went red at that point it cut the the load as long as you have uh, at least uh, five volts I saw it will still light up the display but uh, this turned off it actually cut power so you're not seeing it uh, lit up on the display right there it doesn't see any power that switch is off that relay is off hopefully that makes sense and then we just need to raise the voltage enough right there 12.3 uh, volts and it uh, reconnects. But again, uh, this doesn't need the low voltage uh, cutoff. As you can see there, it stops letting current in uh, well before that. Also notice, uh, let's unplug this. A uh, little current was trickling through. So 
um, it wasn't actually that may have been lighting the display I don't know but we got about 45 milliamps right there that's to energize the relay coil and uh, let's drop this down um, when the voltage gets low enough the coil is not energized anymore in in the off position and you can see it's like a one milliamp it looks like I'll uh, move that over about one milliamp of power or so so we have to light that LED but if the battery is big enough that won't really account for any of the uh, power that it can provide and a couple other things really quickly this is a fair rule connector so that was a round tube we slid it onto the wire and then the crimper crimped it into this shape so my crimper makes it uh, square shape like that with the uh, little ridges that hold on to the wire then you slide the connectors into the slots there there is extra room here you could probably go up to the next higher size and uh, then you just screw it down and let's take a quick look at the relay there so it's uh, rated for 12 volts relays are mechanical switches there's actually a moving part that uh, switches it and uh, it takes a current to determine the position right there so no current uh, less than uh, a bit less than 12 volts uh, will mean that it will be in the off position you get uh, about 12 volts across the coil current's going to flow through enough to move the uh, switch and that's the basic property so there's higher voltages here you would not use that for this module and uh, you'd have to look at the manufacturer specs for the maximum voltage you could do uh, but in any case this is just the voltage for the relay when it comes to these modules though they can usually uh, the whole module can usually handle the current that the relay can handle again check the manufacturer sheet but uh, let's just go with 10 amps uh, it's probably safe to put 10 amps uh, through here but uh, I would stick about halfway or less, 5 amps or less. My particular battery I was using, I would only put about uh, 1.5 amps uh, through here. That would be my goal. It's a 7 amp hour battery. And that's somewhere about 20% of that amp hour. Um, is about 1.5 amp hours. And you don't want to drain the battery in an hour if you can avoid it. You know, try to spread it out to about 5 hours. 